and welcome back. Let's talk about angina. Angina is a relatively common presentation, but can have disastrous consequences if it isn't managed early and effectively. With the rise of rapid access chest pain clinics up and down the country, referral processes to cardiologists have been streamlined, but we still need to be familiar with the chest pain guidance. Angina is effectively pain or discomfort involving the chest, neck, shoulders, jaw or arms due to an inadequate blood supply, usually because of coronary artery disease. However, sometimes this can be caused by valvular disease, cardiomyopathies or severe hypertension, but we'll be covering the former today. Stable angina is a predictable pattern of disease with chest pain on exertion or emotional stress that is relieved on rest or sublingual nitrates whereas unstable angina can be differentiated by occurring at rest, the latter of which will require emergency hospital admission. If a clinical assessment and history of stable angina cannot fully determine a diagnosis, the NICE recommend a resting 12-lead ECG that may indicate ischemia or previous infarcts in some changes including pathological Q waves, left bundle branch block, or ST segment T wave irregularities. Once a diagnosis is established, following local policies to obtain a cardiology assessment as soon as possible is vital. But NICE recommend the usage of sublingual GTN until a cardiology appointment with clear safety netting is achieved. In addition, NICE recommend risk factor modifications including smoking cessation, diet modification, weight monitoring and physical exercise, but the latter most obviously within the limitation of symptoms. In terms of subsequent first-line antianginals, Either a beta blocker or a calcium channel blocker is used as regular treatment to reduce anginal symptoms. If a patient is already on one of those, then combination therapy is considered. If this isn't tolerated, then second line treatment can be considered, which usually is a choice between a long-acting nitrate, nicorandil, evabridine or renolazine, depending on the patient's medical background. If, despite this, the patient is still symptomatic and even the highest licensed doses, then another drug from the list above should be introduced in addition or substituted in. If symptom control is still undesirable, then cardiology opinion should really be sought to consider revascularization, whilst NICE recommend that the addition of another drug in the meantime could be considered. Well, what about secondary prevention? Once a patient has established angina, they are advised to take antiplatelet therapy, usually aspirin, 75 mg a day. Depending on comorbidities, an ACE inhibitor is considered in patients with hypertension, heart failure, chronic kidney disease or previous ischemic heart disease unless it's contraindicated. And lipid modification and blood pressure control is advised in addition. And that's that. We hope you've enjoyed this video on angina, summating the most recent NICE guidance. If you've enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and be sure to head over to www.dorkydocs.com for more revision content. But otherwise, we'll see you in the next video.